All right, well, it's 8.03. Um, so just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. I would like, what's the date today? <laughs> I'd like to bring the uh, Stockbridge Bowl Stewardship Commission meeting to order on 9-16-2022. So um, first on our agenda is approval um, September 2nd, 2022 um, minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. And uh, I just wanted to note there were a couple of typos that Sally pointed out to me, and I made those changes, but they were minor. And I found another one. I found a comma somewhere that needed to go away. But <laughs> it was all minor stuff. Um, okay, and so then um, I'm going to try to bring up with a screen share um, the draft, and we can go through this. Hopefully this is the last time. Now I did try calling GZA, didn't get a hold of anyone. I know that Jim Roy, I got a response back that he is out of the office until um, the 20th. But in the meantime, Ben Burpee was working on this. Where's my coffee? If you want, I got an extra on the call. Just I got two. <laughs> Just need to get two. If you didn't bring some for everybody, I don't know. Let me just find <laughs> mine. All right, what? this always throws me. Yeah. We want this. Okay. Where are you gonna be in Um I'm right by right by Hawthorne Street and Hawthorne. No. Why? I just know if you want to come out on the boat. Oh, that is even better, sure. Just give me a call. Do you have my cell phone on there? I don't know you choose the boat out please. Yeah, you're gonna find both. <laughs> okay. Um, what time? So, when? Well, when the let's just walk through this. I, there were not a lot of changes. So we're there. Anything that we so. discussed the last time was incorporated. Um, I know that there was some concern. Um, we added Lake Mackinac, commonly known as Stockbridge Bowl. Um, Sally had picked up on that, and it's also changed to Lake Mac, and I found the cover page. Okay, it's up there. And let's see. Next change we had was uh, starting on page one, going into page two, after a harmful cyanobacterial bloom in 2018, which prevented the lake being used in a popular annual triathlon event, the great Josh Billings run aground, the town of Stockbridge created a cyanobacterial working group, which recommended lake sampling to the board of selectmen. The town contracted to have the lake sampled in July, 2019. In 2020, the town commenced routine annual limnological monitoring of Stockbridge Bowl as a primary component of lake and watershed management. So we had discussed adding something about this, some of these other historical things. So that's what I wrote. It's good. Everybody good with that? Yep. Yep. Jim? Jim Willis? You're yeah, okay? sorry about that. It took me a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, and then GCA is supposedly in the process then of plugging in on page two the summary of specific management efforts. And they're going to do that based on everything that we've provided so far. Uh, let's see. The next change was on page four. Uh, project partners and stakeholder input is the uh, heading. The Stockbridge Select Board appointed the Stockbridge Bowl Stewardship Commission in 2020, quote, to conserve and protect Lake Mackinac and its watershed to enhance water quality fishery. I'm not sure this changed of the lake, let's see, fishery, wildlife habitat, and aesthetics of Lake Mackinac as a public recreational facility for today and for future generations while respecting the interests of property owners and the public, providing permanent stewardship to the lake ecosystem, unquote. So that's basically the mission statement of this group. Right. Is this in 2021? Pardon me? Wasn't it 2021? 
When we created this initially, we, in our first meeting, came up with that mission statement. That was prior to it being in the bylaws. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and then it follows on and it says on 6 12 2021, an annual town meeting, the town voted to incorporate the Stockbridge Wool Stewardship Commission, SBSC, into its bylaws, which is Article 27, thereby establishing an advisory body signaling a permanent commitment to the lake and its watershed. And let's see. Um, GCA is going to be, and I sent them an email about this. Uh, we had added several different reports that have um, been done recently, which was Tom Coots. Um, I think actually two of them, they had missed one. And so it's the last two years of Tom Coots reports, the aquatic plant reports. Um, and there was one other one, um, oh, the aquatic roots, which I received. So I sent them what they had written, Stockbridge Bowl findings, and they will incorporate some kind of a summarization verbiage about each one of those reports. Um, let's see, correction, <laughs> Bullard Crossing Trail. So this should be Bullard Woods though, shouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Are you talking about the- I think I- When you say Crossing Trail, are you talking about the one that connects to Gould? Come on. Yeah. I think it's called the Tanglewood Connector, actually. Uh -huh. Shoot. Hang on. I want to do this right now. Because we'll put Bullard Woods Crossing Trail. But I think it's actually called the Tanglewood Connector Trail. I have no idea. I'll find out. AKA uh, I'm sure it is. Tanglewood. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Connector Trail? Yeah. Good night. We got across the tank with property. This is okay. descriptive. Yeah. No harm there, I don't think. Um, then let's see, we added investigate discharge pipes identified during a survey. I don't know why that's highlighted. Mm -hmm. I don't remember now. Does anybody else remember this? No. It was suggested to put this in here. I wonder if Mike Buffoni. Yeah, I don't see Mike here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe you get a banner for your boat. So when the Joshua is going on, it says Stockbridge Bolt Stewardship Commission. The computer is very you slow. Get a flag. Yeah, what flag? Okay. We have to come up with a burgee. A what? It's gonna go, a burgee if it's going to go on a boat. Yeah. Maybe maybe a plane with like a little trailer. There you go. It's going to stay that way for now. Mm -hmm. Computer's I very just slow. The Stockbridge, you know, logo. Anyway, okay, another correction um, in the watershed name. It's Lake Mackinac, and then in parentheses, I kept Stockbridge Bowl in parentheses. Um, okay, page fourteen. Again, the Lake Mackinac reference is corrected. Uh, so the only wording changes in here is in this sentence. The lake is a highly valued resource that provides recreation to both full-time and part-time residents, local and regional citizens, as well as to the numerous visitors who come for the local summer camps, the Tanglewood Music Center, and other cultural attractions. Fishing and boating events was in there local and regional school programs, so we broadened that, and other special events such as the Great Josh Billings Run Aground, a popular triathlon, so we tell them again what that is. Um, Stockbridge Bowl, and I added the word wholly located in the town of Stockbridge. It does not cross from one way to another. You way to blow it up just to tell you that. Um, oh, how do I do this here? I think it's a... It's a there are also two thing. annual canoe races, if you really want to cookie add them all in, the Cookie Bowl and the Chocolate Bowl. You want to add those? We can do that. Turkey bowl and the chocolate bowl. Yep. And, and the chocolate bowl. Yep. Various fishing derbies. Those are, okay, and yep, fishing derbies. And van after van of Maribel people. Cookie bowl and chocolate bowl. <laughs> those are just Canoe, kayak, paddle board races that have okay. been in existence for 30 plus years now. Okay. 
And the occasional no. flying planes. No longer. <laughs> the water planes. No longer organized yeah. by the Underwood Millers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we we'll gave it up the, after 30 years. <laughs> um, fishing derbies. What's going on? How many fishing derbies do we do, Gary? I have to ask Tim Minkler. I know he does one. I think there's another one from the Sportsman's Club. Yeah. There's ice like fishing, a... and there's, is there one in the they other usually, seasons? They're usually earlier in the year. Yeah, they usually do one in May, I think. Or, yeah. Yeah. We haven't been or able to do the ice there. ones lately because we haven't mm, had enough I haven't ice. done that in a while, I think. At yeah. least I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Okay, but I can check with Tim. Yeah, Tim would tell you. Okay, okay. so we'll elaborate a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that better? It's a two hundred percent. All right. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go sit in front of it. Okay. So. Oh, yes, I can. I we will add those things. I said it's holy. Um, then the next change is this outlet structure has been. Out of my way. Mm -hmm. In the past, used for lake drawdowns. So we're making it clear right now we're not doing drawdowns, but the outlet structure has been in the past used for lake drawdown during the winter. Uh, and then the only other thing we changed was crossing out the word. Was then? What does that mean? Was? Been, used? They had been in there, the word that just needs to go away. So it's no longer used? It's, oh, okay. Oh, I, I can't it's see It's just the getting changed. Right. No, so they had worded winter drawdown was been used. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was, that's what I'm I was sure they about. probably want to say has been, but I just said was used as a management mm -hmm. technique for decades. Mm -hmm. um, same thing down here in the past, the holding area was routinely dredged. Um, it has not been dredged in my report. And are we going memory. with never? Are we going with yes, the hyphenated spelling of Mackinac or the non-hyphenated spelling? It's non-hyphenated. Yes. Camp is hyphenated. Camp is hyphenated. Oh, I see. It says camp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the camp. Yeah. So the yeah, the next change is down here. This is Sally again. I love it. I love having a good editor. <laughs> so anyway, she she reminded me this is a hyphenated word for the camp. So we did that. Um, so then oh, I stipulated that Gould Meadows is a town property and Bullard Woods is Stockbridge Hall Association property. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing really changed there. Then down in here, when they make reference to um, nine bathing beaches, we don't know about nine bathing beaches, but um, the changes I made, Berkshire Country Day School, and they have no, this is just data from... Yeah, Berkshire Country Day School has no, 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 beach. no beach. It was part of the... It was uh, the Henry Williams. Property. It was this, part, what what is was Henry Williams' property was yeah, 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 part right. of that estate, yeah. but right. but they've had not had yeah they've not had lakefront prop, um, but they used the lake. They used the lake, but when I mean, the had, high school was there, they had the rowing right program. But that's covered like when we talk about the local right. and regional schools. On that on that gold section where we were just at, uh, did you mention the fact how how nice it was for Tanglewood to install the connector trail and you know link gold meadows and below i think it might be nice to call them out and give them a little you know thank you i don't know it's up to you well i don't know i don't know that this is a pr document i mean this no it's not but that was like a it was a significant issue back when they did, did they it. do it remember when they connected i remember i know well we yeah, it was a lot we of, don't want to thank them for that good no okay i think we wanted Yes. <laughs> Stick to the facts. Yeah. So anyway, so I said no, no beach, and we're going to let GZA, you know, right, figure out how to word this. Yeah, I, because I, this came out of they're referencing um, the Houstonic River Watershed 2002 Water Quality As Assessment Report. So they're referencing an existing report here. So the report was inaccurate apparently at the time. But they'll know how to address that so that it's, we make it clear we don't really have nine public beaches or anything. Um, Camp Mackinac. There might be eight. Yeah, we got yeah. There's a little one at Lake Drive. So there's Mackinac, and they've got listed Kropala. Yes. The sports day camp I put, now that's private property, so that yeah. no longer exists. It was never really a beach anyway. 
Right. Really. And then Tanglewood, the town beach, White Pines, Mackinac Shores, that's seven. Mackinac Terrace has a beach, that's eight. Yeah. Beachwood. Beach was a beach. Yeah. <laughs> Lake Drive does not have one. Lake Drive has that tiny beach. It's a little public space where you can launch a boat yeah, and they've got they a little. Did. Yeah, it's back in the channel. Over. Oh, and also you could consider, consider the cove a beach, sort of. You know, people can hang out there and, you know, not not really not get a beach. tick or something. Yeah. Roxanne, this is Jim. Is it, this is all the data that I sent you for the peaches. Is this something different? No, this is something different, I think. Oh, okay. This, didn't come from you, I don't think. Oh, okay, yeah, because I, you know, I, there's a differentiation on maybe this and then like what our role is for our public beaches for our testing. Right. Okay. So Mackinac Shores and Beachwood. But most of you got the terrace in there. Most of them are private. You got the shores twice. What? You got Mackinac Mackinac Shores. We want terrace. And Mackinac there's, Shores. There's, this is terrace. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're going to add that stuff. And I will talk to them about that. Um, next change. We didn't have a lot. So this hopefully will stay to one hour meeting today. Um, that was the correction that, again, Sally pointed out. I'm such a pain. No, I love it. Because it's like, I'm not going to catch everything. And it, this gets pretty tedious after a while. So it's real nice to have other sets no, of eyes on this. it. Um, okay, so here we made a change last meeting. Additional identified goals related to environmental health and recreational safety include. And so we changed the wording here. Protect and encourage preservation of a native buffer zone around the lake, conservation commission and planning board within the lake and pond overlay district. So I think that came from you, Sal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then pond overlay is supposed to be a 35 foot buffer mm -hmm. all around the lake, which unfortunately is not mm -hmm. um, maintained and but should definitely be encouraged by all because um, it's such an important thing for the why don't we health of the lake? Can we well, enforce should it? Should we put that in there? That's thirty-five foot buffer. Yeah, that's the LPOD. Yeah. What's okay. the difference between that and the hundred and fifty foot? The the hundred and fifty foot is jurisdictional. Oh, what does that mean? So say then. It, that's when um, the conservation commission has a two hundred foot jurisdiction under the town wetlands bylaw. The um, Wetlands Protection Act is 100 feet mm -hmm. and the LPOD is 150 feet. So each one has a different jurisdictional. Um, okay. But what's, and what, what are some of the differences between uh, the 35 foot buffer zone and the 200 feet jurisdictional? Well, the 35 foot buffer, buffer zone under the LPOD is mandated that there that if you own a piece of property on Stockbridge Bowl, you're supposed to have an undisturbed area of 35 feet from the bank of the of the lake um, onto your property. And some properties that they're so small or the house is located in a, such a way that um, that can't be enforced. But um, but it's still encouraged wherever possible. And there's some talk about trying to figure out some way to do a percentage mm -hmm. of, you, you know, if you only have 35 feet between your house and the, and the lake, obviously you're not gonna be planted all the way up to the house, mm -hmm. but still the presence of that buffer zone is, mm -hmm. is critical to the health of the lake. If you, if you mow your lawn all the way to the bank of the lake, you're, all, you're encouraging um, erosion and um, you're permitting geese to just come popping up on your lake. I mean, they don't like, they don't like vegetated areas. So it, it serves two purposes. It not only protects the lake, but it keeps the geese from coming up on your property. So anyway. Okay, now um, the next two items, and I, Pat Canelli is here. Um, but anyway, these two items, we didn't know where they would go because these are potentials. And so this is something that once they come back to us with a draft, 
you know, I had talked to Steve Roy about it. I said, well, we have to figure out how do we put in things that we would like to have as options, that these are things that may happen in the future, but they're not happening right now. You know, how do we address that? So they'll be, when they're reorganizing some of this data, that they're going to be addressing this. Um, I know that Pat was a little bit concerned about this, but I don't think so. This really is just the fact that these things are not happening. The targeted herbicide treatments yeah. are not happening right now. And old growth tree, you know, protection, again, it's not happening right now. But this is something that obviously is, you know, in the toolbox, things that we would consider doing. You know, and there's another thing that we need to, I think we need to just be based on site visits that we've been doing around the lake. We have a serious, serious infestation of woolly adelgid in the, and, and emerald ash borer and other mm -hmm. diseases of the trees that are, that are around the lake. And um, the, as I look at the different properties when we go on a site visit, the hemlock is really a major um, species mm -hmm. and will, because it's, it's you know, not deciduous, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's leafed out or needled out or whatever you want to call it all year round. If those hemlocks all die, it is going to drastically change the landscape of the bowl and and the health of the bowl as well because it provides shade it provides you know all the habitat and mm -hmm. screening and mm -hmm. everything it's really a serious it's becoming a really serious problem well how do we then address a situation like that well we yes. are so you exact two trees that we're doing nice one you inject but that's a nice plan Sally's talking about the around the lake. I know, I know. But some of they're the, ash and hemlock, the two trees that we treated. Yeah, some of the some of the landowners are taking it on themselves to uh -huh. to treat the uh, to treat the trees, but we are we are finding as the conservation commission that that we're getting a lot of requests to remove these diseased trees, particularly the ash. The em, the yeah. uh, hemlocks generally have not all died, although there are a few that have. Um, but the ash have, and so we're getting a lot of requests for people to come in and to, to take them down because they either provide, you know, oh, well, some sort of a hazard or whatever. The ash borer eats like this around around. It kills it so fast. If once you have it, the ashes can't be saved. Right. They have to just be saved through prevention. Right. Um, if there's any that haven't haven't caught it yet, um, the hemlocks. If they're if they if they've got the same disease up here, they have three years. And we should be encouraging people, I said this at your last meeting, to inject with the dinotephron, not to put the neonicotid spray on. Like right, definitely the guy from Race Tree Mountain was talking about, because there's a ton of insects, obviously, in the bowl. And the last thing you want to do is have like some kind of neural killer. You know, you want it in the tree, not in the water. And we don't have any kind of regulation or bylaw that stipulates. No in the LPOD or around the lake in any way, shape or form that you're required to, to um, replace a tree that dies? We do. We, we, we actually okay. do. If we have a, if we have a, um, a if they're, if they're going to cut um, within the buffer zone, right. then they have to come to the conservation commission. They do not have to go to the planning board, but they do have to come to the conservation commission. Even if it's but dead. The, the even dead, if it's dead. Really need to. It's not that we're going to say no, mm -hmm. but we are now requiring them to replant. Okay. okay. But do they have to, are they required to come to you if the tree is actually dead or not? Yes. Grown? Okay. Okay, good. I don't is think there the any uh, stipulation as to yeah, what no. type of <laughs> trees they can plant? They mm -hmm. must plant native uh, species. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's covered. Yeah. Basically, but a concern. It's a it's a serious concern and becoming even more of one. It's it's. We may want to let the public know a little more about this, right? Because I don't think they generally know, especially about cutting the dead trees. Most people just haven't taken down. Well, it's probably not the general public that needs to know, but the people who live in the Stockbridge Bowl need to know. So perhaps it ought to be included in this document that you know if it's in the buffer zone, then it does interest us. Yeah. Okay, yeah. For a lot of reasons. Okay. Well, maybe Let's think Sally about that. Suggest we opening up a can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Also, like, 
you know, Thanks. so many of the humbugs. If, if folks aren't already treating them, they're going to be dead in three or four years anyway. This is a document that's going to hopefully last for decades. It's now going to we be have a, our next agenda item. We're going to talk about public education, so I think that there's going to be some overlap here. Mm -hmm. But let's just get through the rest of the document, and then we can yeah. talk about that. Um, don't remember. So I did this right away after the last meeting, and I haven't looked at it a lot since. Okay, I think there was just a typo here on page 33. I think there was a typo in the year. Mm -hmm. uh, another typo was there. We had to capitalize. I'm not sure that we have any other changes. Oh, a little bit here. Okay, so yeah, Michael Nathan had talked about ecological restoration as opposed to calling something dredging. So I plug that in here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how everybody feels about that. Um, okay, that's a technical term in wellness protection. I don't think yes. we can use it as a kind of just description of uh, synonym for dredging. Well, I put ecological restoration plan and then in parentheses I put via hydraulic dredging. Now I could take the parentheses off. And it's just but, a statement. But is the permit, and I don't know the answer to this, I'm just asking, is the permit that we're doing for dredging an ecological restoration permit, or is it a, because uh, uh, I don't think dredging ecological, I don't think dredging falls into an ecological restoration ever. I think it's a whole different category. Of well, based on what Mike Canales was saying um, about that MEPA meeting, it sounded as though it can potentially be an yeah, ecological yeah. restoration. Um, we're know. not just dredging. I don't think it could be. Yeah. Because this is something that has changed the environment over the years, the siltation. So restoring it to yeah. what it was before, I would think, could be considered an ecological but, restoration. Oh, so, yeah, but the question I'm asking isn't really whether or not it could be. It's whether or not the silo that a dredging project fits in is the ecological restoration silo. You know, well, you know, this would be the thing if we have, um, if we have, yeah, Dave and Dave. Mark right, 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 review it, right. they would, they would okay. be able to pick that up, right? I and think. GZA may know as well yeah. when they're going through this. Yeah. So what I did is I took off the parentheses, and then I just made um, hydraulic by a hydraulic dredging part of that title that heading. Um, let's see, Beachwood shoreline. Um, these are minor changes that were just typos probably. And let's see, um, here, stormwater improvement plans. Um, I just added community preservation funds have been granted to remove shoreline invasive species and replace them with native plants. So that's, that's part of, of the town beach project, separate piece. Um, so we added that, those come from obviously taxpayer dollars, community preservation. Um, Let's see. And we had added, I think I talked about this the last time, um, that the boat ramp, public boat ramp, we're awaiting um, DCR response. Mm -hmm. So we're on their list of 500 projects. I have photographs of the devastation of a storm a few years ago. Yeah. Of we just lost the entire driveway going down the yeah. ramp yeah. into the lake. It, it was really, really bad. The whole thing is really not, when we were out there, because we had a meeting with them, with DCR, and yeah, it just, it's not properly designed. Mm -hmm. you know, and it just really needs to be completely redesigned. Probably that entire area um, needs to be I mean, there's significant we, erosion we, around we the bank. We just lost a huge tree. oak tree on the uh, on the shore down at the. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's got a crack in it. The you, can, you can stick your hand into the crack. It's so big. It looks like the tree got torqued and it split open. Where yeah. the? It's on the left. If you're looking at the water, it's on the extreme the left hand room. side. At the yeah. Oh, they, that, that did come down. That was the one we were talking about two years ago. Well, yeah, hard. but that now what happened is with one of the last windstorms, it, it cracked yeah. and it's about 10 feet long. I and mean, then you can put your hand into it and it, the yeah. tree ward's looking at it. We're going to have to take it down. Yeah, that's right. too bad. We knew that was coming. That 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 it's bank was just, just a mess. So it's not the bank. The whole tree got almost. No, what happens is that, you know, it, yeah. it, it, 
Yeah. Well, there's significant, I mean, you can see significant erosion there where, when you oh, yeah. when you walk down, the bank goes this way, and then all of a sudden it goes like that. You see all the roots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, they, they, they propose putting riprap in there, you know, really restoring the shore yeah. and having instead of people you have to file, it, have a ramp. Have to file with the conservation. Committee. Oh yeah, Is they know. Something that just yeah, okay. just that's that's uh, you know uh, public access is yeah ball game. All right, I still need to file with conservation. This section, are, can we talk at all about the Fragmites remediation? Like, and and as a group, are we interested in in addressing because you know at the edge of Gold Meadows there's a stand, and obviously at the causeway there's a giant stand. And um, and it, it one of the thing reasons to put it in is that with dredging, obviously, that if they if if an HESP feels it's a taking, then doing remediation in other parts of the lake helps uh, you know offset the taking in terms of their eyes. You know, you do a good project somewhere else, and it makes up for uh, something that they don't love here. And and we might want to uh, address that as sort of mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Um, let me see, where would we put that in here? We just, it's not under stormwater. We'll have, I'll talk to um, Steve Roy. Is everybody in agreement that we should probably um, do something about Fragmites remediation? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I would think that makes sense. The beach is going to be taken care of yeah. in that regard. And that's good so to, to mention, though, because we're already dealing with it at the beach. And then we've got two other areas that we need to deal with. I think that's actually a really good way to present right. it. Right. So maybe I'll plug it in. I'll, I'll have to take a look at it and see where it'll fit in. Um, but we'll add that. Um, next thing, Wetlands Protection Act and Stockbridge Wetlands Bylaw, Article 7. Stockbridge... That's an extra word. Um, Article 7 ensures adequate oversight of the buffer zone under the authority of the conservation. I got a typo. Commission. Um, public outreach will be undertaken to increase awareness of landscaping best management practices. When we went through this, we took out I'm the sure. stormwater treaty thing. I'm not um, sure ensures is the right word. It, it, um, it expands where is this? What, under the the conservation of the Article 7 one. What it does is it it uh, it um, expands the it, it basically oh, augments right. state wetlands protection act, you know, requirements or laws or whatever to add additional protections to Stockbridge Bowl. Well, and others, and other, and others. I don't know. Well, how do we reword it? That's the bottom line. We've got ensures adequate oversight. What's the better way to word it? Increased oversight. Well, it it, it expands, it empowers more than increases. You know, the, yeah. Oversight's a human thing. This, this yeah, you know, but expands maybe. Expands. No, no, no that's that doesn't that, that so. doesn't read well. You're on conservation, so. Mm. Augments. It augments. Regulates. The... I mean, what it, it, it basically it, it took. You got the state regulations, and then you got our regulations. Well, yeah, we know yeah, that. Yeah, just yeah. what words should we use? I mean, I think we agree. It's just how do we make it clear? I think sure is fine. Okay. Anybody else want to weigh in? I mean, you got to remember this can get changed. In yeah, let me reread it when. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Oh, but. Okay, so we just none of this soil amendment. Um, most commonly used soil amendment is compost. So, but that doesn't necessarily have to be in here. And I think GZA may have a take on this and yeah. redoing this this whole section. But it's basically, yeah, we're recommending we want people to use native landscaping. Um, you know vegetated swales, rain gardens, et cetera. Um, and I did plug in, it's required to use native species within regulated areas under the Watershed Protection Act. And not use herbicides, pesticides, and other chemicals. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add that? Mm -hmm. Because every time we do a notice, notice of intent, we write the order of conditions. Um, we remind people that within 200 feet of the lake, they're not to use herbicides, pesticides, or other chemicals. Okay. Unpermitted. All right. So how do I word this? Let's see. 
Mm. I mean, when the Conservation Commission walks on somebody's lawn and you don't see a dandelion, you know there's <laughs> trouble. <laughs> and it's like. And dandelions are good, they aerate your soil. Well, not only that, but they are the first, um, they're the first plants that the, the bees wake up to in the spring and then they're critical to the, yeah. the survival of our pollinators. Okay, Watershed Protection Act prohibits the use of, how does it work Wait. roughly? Herbicides. Yeah, it's not the Watershed, it's not the Protection, watershed Protection Act. Act. No. no, what's it under? It's, it's the Conservation Commission um, performance standards. Performance standards state that there will be no use of pesticides, herbicides, or other harmful chemicals within 200 feet of the lake. Because everything was the application of or use of or no way to use. Okay. Oh, no, you know, sorry. The minute it rains, all that goes in the lake. Herbicides, pesticides, and other chemicals. Harmful chemicals. Within. Okay, uh, herbicide is a pesticide. So it's either herbicides and insecticides or just pesticides. Right. I'm trying to do multiple <laughs> things at once. <laughs> Herbicides, pesticides, herbicides, and pesticides, though. Herbicides, pesticides, and other chemicals. I, nevertheless, people see it differently. Okay. Within 200 feet of the lake. Yes. Okay. They use pesticides on bugs, and they right, but it's called insecticide. I, I understand that, that really but nevertheless, right. that's the language. Okay. Let's see. Inflow and infiltration. Um, so basically, this is the INI plan and subsequent long-range plan. So I try to make this readable for people. The Stockford Sewer and Water Commission will be starting phase three of the DEP mandated inflow and infiltration study, INI, during fiscal year 23. Phase three of the study is to include identification of the causes of the inflow and infiltration, while the subsequent phase four will address repairing the issues in the collection system as identified in phase three. Once phase four, typo is completed, capacity will be freed up at the wastewater treatment plan, which will then allow future sewer expansion projects to be considered. Okay, okay with that? Perfect. Okay. Um, now the MVP, this wording was changed. The town is implementing multiple efforts to understand the issues surrounding this came from you, Patrick. Stormwater runoff, Stockbridge so voters moved responsibility for our Town stormwater management and erosion control bylaw to the Conservation Commission to align these efforts with other wetlands protection regulations. I cited that it's Article 26. Um, the town also applied for and has been awarded a Massachusetts Municipal Vulnerability Preparation action grant in conjunction with Lennox, New Marlboro, and Pittsfield to assess all culprits in the town of Stockbridge. The initial assessment is complete and we are now evaluating the data in the context of floodplain analysis and climate change. Finally, the town has increased monitoring of streams that leach from the watershed to Stockbridge Bowl to assess both the volume and contents of stormwater, especially important as we experience precipitation events of increasing intensity <laughs> and thermal imaging is being considered. I'm gonna make a new sentence. We're gonna sort of sentence. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, so chef salad, not just a salad. I know. But it's a word salad. You try doing it. You can sit and do this for hour on an hour. <laughs> no, I brought yeah. look at it. Thermal I'm, imaging is being considered to identify areas of groundwater feeding and analyze groundwater <laughs> slash surface water interactions and groundwater influence on lake dynamics. Okay. Are we doing the stream monitoring? I, I put that in because I thought we were, but can yes. we confirm we are doing that, right? That's yes. part of our okay. That's part of the, right, okay. yep, part of the routine. Oh, and just Shelly, do you want to say anything up there about steep slopes and sort of making sure Seems like you guys have a lot of effort on making sure that uh, that that slopes are vegetated and you know. Do you want to add anything to that related to it's about stormwater basically so you know you guys just had that conversation once we come. Yeah, we did. Um, well, that's under the stormwater bylaw. We've um, we've been addressing that when there's been um, a 
disturbance of over 10,000 square feet is when this triggers the stormwater bylaw. Stormwater bylaw governs areas that are upland of, of the uh, of the 200 feet generally. And uh, so, yeah, we do, we do look at that, especially since the bowl is a bowl and, and, and everything that, that happens on the shores of the bowl run into the bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so plantings are really important in terms of maintaining the integrity of the uh, of soils and Okay, so All that stuff. I can put in another paragraph here about stormwater bylaw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will will do. I'll look it up. We'll plug it in. Um, and these bylaws, by the way, when I have cited them here, I have provided the actual bylaw language um, to GZA, so that'll appear somewhere, you know, in an appendix or you know. Good. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is where I plugged in um, some of the costs. Uh, and we can probably reword this ecological restoration via hydraulic dredging. And then I, I don't know why I had that. Um, under WPA, I don't know why we had that there. This is some costs. Why do we have under wetlands protection? I would have put it there for a reason. Can I take that out? Well, when the when the um, project is being permitted, it's going to go under wetlands protection. Okay. All right, and that's why we have it then. Um, available funds. <sighs> Ecological restoration project funds raised approximately 1.5 okay. million Stockbridge Bowl Association. It's, yeah. It, it, people don't understand what that means. It's just, it's the dredging project and everybody calls it that. And I just think we should use names that, that correspond to what people know. It's like, it's like, you know, harvesting, we're talking about that being an ecological restoration project. Uh, the, the, the herbicide program was listed as an ecological restoration project. It's confusing when we use a term that isn't, yeah, doesn't say what it is. That'll do it. Well, yeah. I'm going to do this every place we have it now. And this is going to be for GZA to weigh in and on and also um, Stinson and Cameron. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we should leave it to their expertise as yeah. to how we should do this, yeah. how we should word it. So we'll just put it in for, because this obviously can get changed at any point in time. So, it's, um, mm -hmm. so we've got that. Uh, community preservation funds earmarked. That's $172,000. Um, I don't know, Pat, now, how does everybody feel about giving an attribution to SBA because they're the ones who actually applied for this CPC funds, um, but they now have actually released them to yeah, I, be utilized for this. Well, the town um, also. I mean, it was, I mean, it's uh, town it was, money, it's taxpayer money. So. Yeah. Okay. I think we can put both in or not, or just put SBA in. That's fine. Uh, I think the larger question is. Uh, well, we're not at the 70% engineering, how are we given a price? What's the question? Total cost price. I don't know that we're ready to. It's approximation. Okay. We can put in to be determined here. These can be approximations. This is based on the conversation I have with Nat Arai. Um, so this was a guesstimate. But it's subject to change. Obviously, yeah. we don't have all the costs, but it's approximately. Oh, is that a dash? Approximately three to four million dollars. Okay, I thought it was three point four. I, no. I see it's a dash now. Three I'm sorry. to four. Okay. Million. So that's yeah. just an approximation based on fairly in-depth conversation. Every yeah, or I conversation gets a little murky for me. <laughs> anyway, additional permitting process costs. He, he came up with. Two, Approximately, again, it's an approximation, 200000 
hydraulic dredging, approximately 2.4 million. Final design plan costs, approximately 50,000. Engineering specs and bidding to be determined. Engineering oversight, design services during construction, which I guess mm -hmm. their commonly used abbreviation is DS. DC, uh, that's to be determined. And then stormwater improvement plan phase three was 99. Now I thought it was more than that, but that's what Mike Canales gave me. No, that's right. That's right, okay. No. And phase four, that still is to be determined because it's contingent on how much we have to repair. Mm -hmm. We won't know until phase three is done to get, we won't know enough to get an estimate. But the stormwater management is under I and I, right? Is that right? Or am I missing something? Yeah, stormwater management. Okay, so we should probably put inflow. Yeah, because I think that's confusing because we talked yes, about it. Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay. Put it in space, maybe. Space after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you think uh, uh, you might just sort of set this up to look more like, you know, you know, usually you have like the, you know, like in a spreadsheet, it's like a table on the left and then well, on the right column. They're right. going to yeah, do okay. that. Oh, okay. 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 That's, that's their job. We're paying them to do that kind of stuff. Do we want, do we want to call it stormwater management here? It seems confusing to me. You mean it's confusing with the water system, with the uh, water and sewer infiltration study? Yeah, it may be a little confusing to say that. Yeah, I thought about that too. No, that's how they have it set up in, in this document. And this is basically a template that gets used. Um, it's a watershed based plan. Hmm. So it's a template that they use. We can ask them that question, but I know we already okay. we already expressed the other concerns we had all right. about all the history being up front. Um, so there's been a general conversation about that and they may reorganize this. Yeah. So. Once they get it all and they work on it, mm -hmm. we're going to get another draft. So. Okay, we'll get something from them. Roxanne, do you feel this body will weigh in on uh, on recommendations for funding the balance? If it's three to four million, it's maybe a couple million dollars. Are we going to make a recommendation to the select board on how to fund that? I mean, these ways the general bond have the town pay. You know. Well, we can. I don't. I don't. We can certainly have a discussion about it. We certainly could do that. Might be a little premature, though. but I think it's early in the game right now. And also, SBA, Pat, if you're still here, you can weigh in. But um, the SBA may also do additional fundraising, and so that this may not be a huge issue. The one thing is clearly your finance committee. And the select board will both also have their own ideas about this. Now, I would say that the expertise in terms of how to fund things sits with those bodies rather than with us. On the other hand, maybe we can certainly voice our opinion. Between you and me, we have a little bit of experience with it. Though. That's why I'm just saying. Well, you and I do, but yeah. you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> you still have your finance committee to deal with, and you still have, right. you know, my canalysis opinion as well to mm -hmm. the administrator to weigh in. So, but I, I think, yeah, that's premature. Okay. Getting ahead of Even if we receive funding from the SBA, I don't think that mm -hmm. that's something that we can. The only reason that would be a voluntary, that would be a voluntary oh, no, exactly. um, contribution on their part, not something that. No, we're not we recommending could, that. We, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's no, but, their you know, decision if right. they want to do that. Stuff. The only reason I bring it up is because. When you say we've got a million and a half in donations, and then you say a project's three to four million, it looks like we don't have financing in place. For the, and I know we technically don't, but it, you know, I just I'm just addressing the fact that it doesn't necessarily read like this is, like, like we never act together. Yeah, we we don't. We're not the the top and the bottom. You know. Well, <laughs> you typically do not necessarily when you're planning a project and when you're going through this kind of phase, you do not already have the money. The town doesn't always have the money before we engage in any project. Oh, clear. And typically, yeah. lots of grants, the reimbursement yeah. grants, we got to come up with the money first, mm -hmm. and we get the grant later. So I think this is just indicating we've already we already have this much towards this project, you know, and we're at this 
phase of the project, which is for just about a 70 percent um, engineering design. 591 grants around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. I'll apply for them. Anyway. So, okay, so we've clarified this. Inflow and infiltration is that. Um, education, you know, it's going to, we'll have another di brief discussion about this today. We're getting well, late there. We have 10 minutes. Um, pamphlets, flyers, posting, townwide communications, community feedback. So that's a whole topic in and of itself that we can come up with various ideas of how we disseminate information and what information should we sharing what do we think is really critical um let's see the annual water quality that was already in there that's forty thousand dollars a year um tom coot is 1400 a year uh a bargain annual water chestnut monitoring i i this is approximation fifteen thousand a year which i think is being very conservative i think year after year if we monitor this that cost just will keep going down um, zebra mussels, we get the state grant of $6,000 a year. Water chestnut, um, town budget, and then up to $10,000 was allocated, and this is fiscal year 23. Uh, let's see. This we haven't, I haven't worked on it. I want to <clears throat> have a conversation with Steve Roy and or Ben Berkey so we know what we're doing there. And I think they're going to fill that in. Uh, dredging project plan here, I didn't change it. I can make it consistent here. August 25th, 2020, meeting with NEPA to determine permitting requirements. Um, it's anticipated to be scheduled in 2024. That's assuming that it takes a year to get through the permitting process. Um, so this is just the timeline stuff. Uh, phase three is underway now. Phase four, dependent upon findings. So I'm going to be consistent with numeric and Roman numerals with this. I got to fix that. Upon finding sewer expansion plan to be determined by Sewer and Water Commission, and I restate that the I and I has to be completed before any consideration can be given to expanding the sewer system. Um, highway and road improvement plan, I don't know that we have one um, per se, but we do have the de-icing strategy plan. So that's to try to limit um, the chlorides that are being used and still keep the roads safe. But now we can better monitor what we're using. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, and then down in here, it just talks about monitoring. So mm -hmm. ongoing <laughs> limnological monitoring is conducted by the town using contracted professional services of GZA, Glastonbury, Connecticut. Regular monthly sampling is conducted by the Stockbridge Water Department starting at ice out April through November, eight rounds with additional sample collection as needed, i.e., for example, following severe weather events. Uh, a GZA limnologist and certified lake manager accompany our employees twice a year. Beach testing, Tri-Town Health Department tests certain locations. This came from you, Jim. Uh, around the ball that qualifies as a semi-public beach from Memorial Day to Labor Day, the regulation is uh, the CMR. Tri-Town Health Department tests for E. coli, Beachwood, Town Beach, White Pines, Tanglewood, Camp Mackinac, Propalo, and Eden Hill. If there is an exceedance of E. coli, the exceedance area is posted as shut down until retest complies. All findings are reported to DPH each year. We also conduct visual environmental field inspections weekly when we sample to check for blooms, algae droppings, and do head counts on swimmers. Eden Hill. Pardon me? Eden Hill. Yeah, it's like Marion. Eden, uh, Eden Hill Day Camp is, is at BCD, but they don't have a beach. They're, no, they have a pond, but we test it. Okay, so it's their pond. Yeah, it's their pond, yeah. Okay, thanks, Jim. <clears throat> okay, um, septic. Tritown Health Department enforces 310 CMR 15, overseeing perk tests, Title V witnessing inspections and design work to include plan approval and installations. 
Some systems that are IA innovative alternative systems require a maintenance contract in perpetuity over the life of the system. <clears throat> they are in inspected either quarterly or semi-annually depending on the DEP approval, approval letter. Tritown Health, got a typo, receives copies of the inspections. For systems that fail, if sewer is available, property owners are required to connect to sewer. For those older systems that may not be functioning, complaints or referrals are required for Tritown Health to take action. The SBSC may discuss a bylaw putting into place a mandatory maintenance program, which could then be enforced. Tritown Health receives tank pumping reports and they are reviewed. Oversight of septic related work is a large component of the Tritown Health Department's responsibilities. It's also something that we often put in, we will put into our order of conditions or require of the applicant. If they have um, a pump system, for instance, that has mm -hmm. to pump everything uphill, um, they are required to have a maintenance contract. Do you want to just write up a sentence about that? We can plug it in. Okay. You have to remind me what I said I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> You know, okay, so kind of something um, else I was going to do too. Um, and this is basically sewer requirements. Yeah. That'll give you enough of a reminder, I think. Okay, and then this I need to run by you, Sally. Tom Coot of Otter Environmental will continue to do aquatic plant and species Marstonia lustrica and bridal shiner surveys annually on behalf of the Stockbridge Conservation Commission or other town entity. So I'm assuming that one way or another, it's in our best interest to have him come out and do what he does. Yeah, now, whether it's absolutely. the Conservation Commission budget paying for it or the SBSC budget, uh, you know, is anybody, is everybody okay with that? I thought that was a fairly safe assumption. Yeah, he, is, he has been ex extremely informative for us. Mm -hmm. I, you might just phrase it to say that the SPSU uh, will recommend this year that this become a line item in the in the town budget. Mm -hmm. You know, just so that we're not getting ahead of our skis with the rest of you know. Absolutely. Oh. We have to get through the lake management plan, then we'll talk. No, about I'm saying it says we'll continue. I, I feel like this we, that decision. I I completely support it, but you know. The, the budget, the finance committee, and the. Oh, so you board. just want to change the wording. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want to not look like we're presuming. Yeah. Okay. Recommends. We should probably yes. take a vote. Yeah. Most we recommend that Tom Cook keep doing his work on the lake every year. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, in so I'm going to take a roll call vote on this. So do we all agree that the SBSC recommends that Tom Coot of Otter Environmental should continue to do aquatic plant and species surveys annually? We want to make it absolute Tom Coot because... Yeah, yeah no, right. Or... Yeah, I had a question on that. I mean, I know Tom is, this is Jim, by the way, I know Tom is doing it now, but if we take a a vote, should we just say the SBSC recommends that, you know, continuous uh, surveys be conducted that way there in case in the future, yeah, of course, right. a yes. different vendor, you can say, you know, it, we don't have to go back and amend a vote. Right. Well, that's, yeah. that's what I was going to suggest because, you know, yeah. there's the hit by the bus, you know. Yeah. And also like, yeah. Procurement rules, <laughs> so, yeah. you know. <laughs> so let me change this. Well, for fourteen hundred dollars, we don't have to worry about procurement rules. Yeah. That's a simple. That's a simple one. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really concerned about procurement. It's more of a just going back and making changes because someone else is def doing it in the future. Okay, the SBSC. Well, we have to take the vote. Let's take an official vote on this one. Okay, so um, I move. Does everyone agree that the SBSC recommends aquatic plant and species surveys continue annually on behalf of the Stockbridge Conservation Commission or other town entity? 
Yes. I second yeah. that. Yep. Let's pick out or other town entity. It is the it is the conservation commission. Well, it may or may not be paid for by the conservation commission. At some it's point, it says on behalf of, not paid for by. It is a it is a a thing that the conservation commission has. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, well, Roxanne, could, can we just say, just take out, do we have to say Stockbridge Conservation Commission or does it matter? Why don't we just say the town of Stockbridge? Yeah, that's, 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 uh, the SBSC okay. recommends to the town of Stockbridge the um, aquatic plants and species surveys continue annually. Yeah. Well, is it okay the way it is? Because I'm tired yeah, of typing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make that motion. This is Jim. I'll make that motion that the SBS. I second that motion. All right. All those in favor. All right. So we're roll call vote. I rise. Jim, Jim yes. Yes, John. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's unanimous. Okay. Okay, then the next thing that's in here is the town of Stockbridge with current financial support from the Stockbridge Bowl Association. Um, I don't know why I worded it this way. It's probably very... No, that's just like the heading. Um, aquatic roots of Pittsfield Mass has been contracted by the town of Stockbridge to handle invasive water chestnut. Monitoring is expected to continue on an annual basis. Oh. And then maybe just the SBA has generously contributed this effort. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm at the meeting right now. I'll be home in about 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll contribute. No. Well, we can't speak That's for a board. No, this is what they voted on. Maybe we should. Right. Say. They have That's contributed the in the past. I mean, two. Yes. Yeah. Because I've, I've, I'm leery of putting an onus on them when we have yeah, no control right. over them. No, but it's you know a fact that yes, they, that's why I'd like to say they they voted to do that. So because yep. it's a fait accompli at the moment, but so okay, they SBA, could change their minds in the future. The board really right. not. SBA has voted to contribute up to ten thousand dollars to this effort. Perfect. In fiscal year twenty three. Okay. Okay. Stuff they're going to fill in. And I think that is it. Now we're already over an hour. Um, so I'm going to recommend that we put off um, discussing public education because I think that's you know going to be a lengthy topic. Um, so maybe our next meeting we can bring that up. No. Um, and then I suppose we should just go around and if anybody has updates. So Jim Willis, do you want to lead off? Yeah, um, I don't really have any updates related to the SBSC, but, um, you know, putting my public health hat on, you know, we are finalizing our flu vaccine clinics and our uh, the collaborative is also offering our, our, um, our booster clinics for COVID. So just pay attention to that and we'll be working on that as we advance. But other than that, I, I do agree with you, Roxanne. We, I, I want to spend a lot more time on the public education outpiece and not feel rushed into that conversation. So I'm good for next meeting on that. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, we don't have microphone here today. Let's see. Um, John? No, we have nothing from the water sewer. We did not have a meeting. Okay. Sally? I think we're good. Okay. Uh, Michael Nathan, we don't have Patrick. Well, there's two things. One, I just want to uh, express admiration and thanks to Michael Nathan and to Hugh Page for the tremendous amount they did around harvesting for the Josh on Sunday. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they they you know did the extra effort uh, to make sure that um, that the the uh, the areas they need a little bit of attention where where the the canoers and kayakers will be are are clear now and that was just quite fantastic and then i especially wanted to thank you Paige, for all his work he did yesterday making sure that all the trails at gould meadows uh that connect between tango where the parking is 
And, you know, 183, our all mode, he spent all day there yesterday, and it looks really fantastic. And so I just want to thank both of them. Yay. 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 I and know. We mowed, we mowed the trails in Bullard Woods, too. Good. So, and I'm going to actually, let me see if I can do a screen share again. So actually, I did get up the water chestnut. Where is it? So nobody's seeing this. Why is this not up? Let me stop share. Let me start share again. Where is it? Yeah, it's nice. It's not opening. Oh. Your screen share. You have to choose a different. I don't know why it's not coming up. But at any rate, what, what's, what am I doing wrong, Patrick? Here it is. There it is. There it is. There you go. There we go. So anyway, so this did go up at the zebra mussel station. Um, so what we have is you can help and we've got the three pictures. Thank you. Now this is the handout. So there's, I put up an acrylic holder that holds these things that people can take these and how they report is on the flip side. This is actually two sided. I've seen it. Yeah. Yep. And I got the whole map. I got the whole channel, you know, on this map. And then there is this larger identification piece that gives bigger pictures and a little bit different verbiage about how, um, and this is laminated and that's posted and that's permanent. Those different. seats really look like alien yeah. like spacecrafts or something, you know? I know. It's like, it's like, you know. Like it's, it's, what was that movie where they put well? the pods under the bed? I've got another one that I can- The put. invasion of the- uh, Body snatchers, yeah, they look like yeah, body snatchers, pods. yeah. Oh, ramp in the <laughs> And then wherever else, if we're late in the year. I think it, but yeah, I mean, the, for next spring, for next certainly. spring, I think it should go to all the nine beaches, mm -hmm. right? As well as the boat club and town the beach too. Yeah, yeah. I've got one for town beach, so I have another holder, and I can do that at town beach. The big question is, is where do you do it so that people see it effectively and it's protected from the rain? You can obviously do it on, you know, on the building on the. Uh, Probably a good place. I think that's probably the best you place know, when people go to use the It might be a good idea to put this on the town website. On yes, the I agree. Yep. Heading. Yep. Yeah, because there are still people out there that are swimming and boating. And, right. um, yeah. and the other um, thing might be, I don't know if they, I know that the, their sister camp has um, an environmental um, component, but I don't know if Mackinac does. But maybe the kids would be interested in mm -hmm. thinking well, about. Yeah. Well, that's a good outreach to, to look at, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. So, anyway, so I think for now, I mean, I certainly have another one. I'll try to get that up this week, um, this weekend when I'm driving up through there to go to work. Um, but so we've got that. And I think for spring, then, and this is a pretty low cost endeavor. Quite frankly, we have laminators here, so it's no issue. Uh, we now have color copying and printing ability that we have one, one machine that will do color here in town hall. So that's nice. <laughs> and then the actual Lucite things I got at Staples and they're inexpensive. They're very inexpensive. So it's a really low cost thing that we can do. And it's a way that we can also disseminate other information. And I know this was the, the sportsman's club this was a big thing with them is like disseminating information and that's the perfect place to do it is at these various spots. Mm -hmm. like, I wonder if the Bowl Association would be, um, would put that in their newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, are you still that. here? They will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. We'll get it to them. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let me stop this. Um, so do we have any questions or comments from the public at this point? We lost Clarence. We must have been pretty boring. 
<laughs> we had Clarence. <laughs> Clarence, you know, Clarence would certainly be some if he's if he's not there. This doesn't really help, but you know, the the eagle could somehow exactly. highlight this. Anyway, um, so hearing no questions, um, I move that we adjourn. So move. Uh,